Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in the last lecture of guitar amplification and effects, we looked at phaser pedals. In this lecture, we're going to look at flanger pedals. Now, phaser pedals and flanger pedals do sound somewhat similar, but they are different. And flanging, in particular, is arguably a more unnatural sounding effect. You could describe it as a little bit more intense, but that, of course, is subjective. Now, the idea behind flanging is that you're going to take the original signal, but you're going to add to it a delayed version of the signal. And to get the swoopy flanger effect, what you do is you change the amount of delay slowly over time. This sounds somewhat like a jet flying over or something like that. Changing the delay time slowly over time is somewhat analogous to the way you slowly change the frequency of the phase shift stages in a phaser pedal. Now, if you use a relatively long delay time, you will hear this as a distinct echo. So flangers use very small delay times that you don't hear as a separate echo, and the result is this weird filtering effect. And actually, you might want to change the intensity of the effect. So let's put in a multiplication by a multiplier, let's call it B here. That will let you change how much of this delayed signal gets added in. Okay, so let's write down the impulse response for this system. We'll have delta T representing the signal that's coming straight through, and we'll add to that B times delta T minus whatever our delay is, and let's let delta be the delay amount. We could take the Laplace transform of this to get the system function capital H equals one plus B E to the minus S delta. And then if we want the frequency response, well, I could have just taken the Fourier transform of this directly, or we could take our Laplace transform and plug in J omega for S. That's assuming that the technical condition that the region of convergence contains the imaginary axis holds, and sure, yeah, it does. All right, so I'll write one plus B E to the minus J omega delta. From this point forward, to get some formulas that are easy to analyze, let's assume that B equals 1. All right, to get a handle on this, I'm going to rewrite it in a way that at first is going to look more complicated. So let me write this as E to the minus J omega delta over 2 times E to the J omega delta over 2. And just to emphasize that there's no minus here, let me put a plus. So when I multiply these two things together, I get the one sitting out in front here. All right, and then I'll have plus e to the minus j omega delta over two. So now when I multiply these factors together, I wind up with this second term. So the reason I went through all of that complication is that I could now use Euler's formula and rewrite the term in parentheses as two cosine omega delta divided by two. So I have a phase term sitting out in front, and then I have a term that's real valued. So it's either positive or negative. And if I were to actually make a phase plot for this, I would want to find the regions where this cosine term is negative and include that in the phase. But for our purposes here, I really only care about the magnitude, so I'm not gonna worry about that. All right, so now let's think about where the zeros of this cosine function are. So when the argument of the cosine, omega delta over two is equal to pi over two plus some multiple of pi. So let me write that as k pi, where k is some integer. Let's see, if we solve for omega, I wind up with this pi over two plus k pi times two over delta. Let's see, and how about I write that as pi over delta one plus two k. So basically pi over delta times odd numbers. And let me indicate that these are zeros by maybe writing a little subscript Z here. 
Okay, so with that in mind, let's now actually draw a frequency response plot. All right, so I'll plot magnitude on the vertical axis and frequency on the horizontal axis. And the omega here is radians per second. Anyway, the plot is going to wind up looking a little something like this. It's basically a cosine, but since we're plotting absolute value, we wind up taking the downward going lobes and flipping them upside down. So we have these nulls at these various points. Let's say I'll have one at pi over delta. I'll have one at three pi over delta, five pi over delta, and so on. So the thing is, there's actually an infinite number of these nulls. So that's very different than something like a phaser pedal. And let me write down something to emphasize this. So this is for a flanger. But if you look at the frequency response, or I should say the magnitude of the frequency response for a phaser pedal, let me not forget the R at the end of phaser there, you'll have a limited number of nulls. Usually you'll have one null for every two stages, and the nulls are not equally spaced the way they are with a flanger. They're more bunched up at lower frequencies and they spread out at higher frequencies. I've drawn three nulls here, so this might be for something like a six-stage phaser. In addition to the fact that the flanger has an infinite number of nulls, whereas the phaser has a finite number of nulls, the difference in the spacing has a consequence in how we perceive the effect. Remember that humans perceive pitch on a logarithmic scale. So a note of A might be 220 hertz, but then the next A an octave above that is 440, the A an octave above that is 880. To get the same perceived pitch, you have to double the frequency. So the overall effect is that these nulls are going to feel more evenly spaced in pitch space than the nulls of the flanger. At higher frequencies, it's going to feel like there's a whole bunch of nulls jammed in a particular octave compared to lower frequencies. So on a flanger pedal, you'll usually have some controls. This B here is usually labeled something like intensity. The other controls generally relate to this delta. So the amount that delta swings will often be called something like width, and the rate at which it swings will be called speed. And some flangers actually have an additional feedback loop, and that's called regeneration, but I won't worry about that here. I usually make the analysis of regeneration a homework problem for my students. Now, I haven't told you how we actually achieve that delay. This is typically done using something called a bucket brigade device, or BBD, and that will be the subject of the next lecture.